Fucking West Palm, fucking Beach, fuck the sheriff's office, fuck you all. That's fine. Okay, I'm going. Roll over. over. Turn over. Hey. But don't get my face like that. She's not in your. She face. was though. Can you stop? She fucking was though. Damn. You don't fucking know me, bitch. Where's my phone? Have you ever seen someone think they're above the law only to be hit with consequences they never expected? Watch as this entitled Karen tries to bully the cops only to face a shocking reality check that she didn't see coming. Let's start with this entitled Karen who throws a fit and then makes things even worse. On April 3rd, 2024, San Diego police were called to the Grandview Hotel to address a disturbance caused by an intoxicated guest, 28-year-old Emily Carter. Carter's behavior escalated rapidly as she exposed herself and began causing a commotion in the hotel lobby. She yelled at hotel staff and demanded to use the lobby phone, contributing to the chaotic environment. Upon arrival, officers found Carter in a highly agitated state. She was visibly intoxicated and displayed erratic behavior. Despite her distress about being unable to access her room and the supposed theft of her phone by her boyfriend, officers maintained a calm and patient demeanor. They listened attentively to Carter's complaints and engaged in a lengthy conversation to address her concerns. Hello. Hi. Where are you staying? Well, I live an hour north. Okay. My friend paid me to come get him. I didn't want to. Okay. And he fucking... What? What happened? Tell me. You can talk to me. They are like, gadget up with, like, fucking inmates and fucking shit. Okay. Everything is stolen from me. What do you mean by that? Everything's stolen. You have my ID? Yeah, I have your ID. Everything else besides my ID is stolen. Okay. What's all that stuff right there? Go for it. Look. No, I don't want to look. I'm just ask, I'm asking you what you mean by that. Do I have a phone? No, I don't have a phone. Someone I don't have a phone. Do you think someone stole it from you? I absolutely know if somebody stole it. Dylan Dreyer stole it. He called me from it not that long ago. Am I upset? 100%. How long are you here for? Just tonight? Yeah. Tomorrow? Well, I was gonna hang out by the pool, but I'm not fucking doing that anymore because I'm fucking embarrassed beyond all belief. Why do you feel that way, though? What's going on? Like, what's going on, obvious, with, is it with him? There's a problem? Can we just, like, not talk about this anymore? Okay. Because, like, we I'm don't want to talk. I'm very, very upset. I just want to make sure you're okay. I'm not okay. That's why I'm here. To try and figure out how I can help you. Do you want to hurt yourself, kill yourself? Injure yourself. Oh, so you can put me in a mental hospital? No, I just have I to make sure. I only want you to put me in a mental hospital. No, because. No, the... are you fucking kidding me? I know those are all the questions. Because if if we go back to the room and something happens to you, I'm gonna feel really bad about that. So <laughs> I have to make sure you're okay. The officers were able to assist Carter in returning to her room after a thorough discussion about the possible location of her phone and the resolution of her immediate needs. Despite their efforts, the situation was far from resolved. You want to go back to the room, you said, right? Well, I can't drive. No, no, I don't want you to drive. No. If it was up to me, I would go home. I, I, I know. But well, like, come on, to... let's get real. I can't I... go home right now. We're gonna take you back to the room. We're just trying to get you back to the room, okay? So it's, you can. So it's you can his switch. jacket. Okay. This is what I was trying to okay. bring to him. Before. Yeah. You, you talking about Dylan? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, Dylan, Dylan's not here. We talked to him. He just said he, he wants you to just stay in the room, sleep it off, and he'll see you in the morning, okay? Or make you know that Dylan has my phone? That's a felony, right? It's over a thousand dollars. Relax, relax. No, no, Alicia. no, Alicia. no. I'm Alicia. not gonna fucking relax. He has my fucking phone. Okay, Alicia. We'll, have him, we'll have him bring the phone back. No, I want my phone right now because I need that's, to talk to my mother. That's what I just said to you. I just said to you. We're gonna no, have... you said, oh, Dylan said he'll talk to you in the morning. No, no Dylan needs to bring my fucking shit back here Alicia, now. Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. I'm, I'm going to take you back to the room, okay? Oh, let me. Okay. Okay, can I not, can we not agree on something? 
Is the over a thousand dollars not worth a felony? I'm gonna t Are you sure he has it? Can we check your room? One hundred percent. He just called me from it. He called How me from it call? on the on the phone here. He called. He used your phone to call here. Yes. How do you know it wasn't just his phone? Approximately an hour after the initial intervention. Police were called back to the Grandview Hotel due to further disturbances caused by Carter. This time she had exited her room and resumed her disruptive behavior, which included throwing objects at hotel staff and continuing to yell. This escalation of her actions necessitated a more forceful response. I have no fucking clue. We told you we're gonna take care of that after, but first we gotta get you set up so that you can go, because they don't want you to stay anymore. What I'm saying is that he stole my ID, he stole my phone, he stole everything from me. I hear you. So how am I supposed to... I already paid for this room and it was $2,000. You just told me that he paid for the room. Get dressed, get ready, we'll leave here, and then we can worry about that next. The officers, upon their return, had to intervene once again to manage the situation. Carter's behavior, which included her aggressive actions and continued public intoxication, led to her arrest for disorderly intoxication. Now what we need to do is put the bags down. We'll take the bags. Wait, are you guys arresting me? Wait, are you arresting me? You're going back. Okay. Wait, why am I being arrested? Right now, you're being placed under arrest for the damage to the room. Really? Yes, ma'am. So, we'll go back to the station, just sit down, sober up a little bit, and we'll talk about it. During the incident, Carter was charged with disorderly conduct under California Penal Code Section 647F. This offense involves engaging in disruptive behavior while intoxicated, including creating a scene in a public place and disturbing others. As a misdemeanor, it can result in up to six months in county jail and or a fine of up to $1,000. Additionally, Carter faced charges for public intoxication, also under California Penal Code Section 647F. This charge pertains to being intoxicated in a public place to the extent of being unable to care for her own safety or the safety of others. It is considered a misdemeanor and carries a maximum penalty of six months in jail and or a fine of up to $1,000. Furthermore, Carter was charged with resisting or delaying an officer under California Penal Code Section 148A1. This violation involves willfully obstructing or hindering law enforcement officers in the performance of their duties. As a misdemeanor, it can result in up to one year in county jail and or a fine of up to $1,000. From a legal expert's perspective, understanding the implications of these charges is crucial. Disorderly conduct and public intoxication can lead to substantial legal and personal consequences including potential jail time and fines. Additionally, resisting or delaying an officer further complicates the legal situation and may result in additional penalties. Seems like this woman just landed herself in hot water, but this is not the worst case. Just wait until you see this next one. On January 13th, 2024, law enforcement officers in Florida were dispatched to a busy bar following reports of a physical altercation. Upon arrival, they encountered a woman who had been escorted outside by security. The woman, visibly distressed, and with noticeable marks on her neck and lip, claimed that she had been assaulted on the dance floor. She presented her injuries to the officers and detailed her version of events. So, Ma'am, Deputy Campbell, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. What's going on? All right, so you see my neck. Okay, tell me what happened, man. So I'm just in there dancing. I'm doing nothing, and like out of nowhere, like I don't know, I honestly like I have no idea why, but there's a group of girls who are in like a, they're in a bachelorette party. I mean, I'm just out there, I'm dancing with another guy in here, like I'm with him, but I'm dancing with another guy in there. They just grab me by the neck and like push me onto the band speakers. So my lip is my lip is busted, and my neck is like. I don't know why. I honestly, I have no idea why. I honestly have no Look, idea why. My fucking neck hurts so fucking bad. They just like took me and like, boom, pushed me into the band. I fell into the band speakers. So the band will even be able to see that like any video is going to show them pushing me into the band. 
Despite the woman's claims, bar employees and witnesses provided a conflicting account. They stated that the woman in question had been the aggressor initiating the altercation. To clarify the situation, officers reviewed the security footage from the bar. The footage corroborated the witness's statements, showing that the woman had indeed been the instigator of the physical confrontation. That lady is crazy. She was pushing and punching everybody in that bar. She started pushing the girls on the dance floor. I don't know what else happened after that, but I tried to get the bouncers. No one else did anything. She uh, aggravated them. Confronted with the footage, the woman became agitated and upset, loudly shouting profanities and insults at the officers. One officer advised her to leave before the situation escalated further. The woman and her party attempted to leave in a pickup truck, but as they were nearly gone, the woman exited the vehicle while it was in motion, continuing to hurl insults at the officers. Okay, so we just reviewed the video. Okay. Stage. It looks like the girl that we're trying to find now, she was just dancing her backwards to her the whole time. They bumped into, she bumped into her, she goes flying towards the stage, and that's when she sits down, then she gets up, and then she charges at her. Well, first of all, somebody tries to pick her up, another girl in there, looks like either a blue or tan, uh, or blue or teal dress, okay. tries to pick her up. So, so that's you right there, right? And there she goes, she charges in, and so there's one that's back. Where's the, uh, yeah, there's one that's back. Okay, go back. That wasn't a throw down to the floor, that was a bump. No. If you look, okay, hang on one second. I'm looking at, we're looking at the video, and I'm going to show you, I'm zooming in right here, so you can see the person's back is to her. She actually bumped into her as she went down. How did my neck get shot? I don't know how that happened. Right, you don't know. Yeah, I'm just looking and seeing what the video is showing me. This is the video evidence. This is it. I got pushed. So I don't know what's showing on that video because I can't see it clearly. I lived in D.C. for 30 fucking years. If I thought some bitch was coming at me, I'd be ready to kick a bitch's ass. I'm going to tell you right now. If I thought these girls were coming at me, I, I'm a DC fucking bitch. I'd be ready to throw down. But I was in there having a good time, not no fighting uh -huh. in me at all. Hey, sir, are you okay? No problem. Well, that's domestic, so. What? You guys should probably go in the car if you're going to do that because if you keep hitting yeah, him, I'll lock you up for domestic. Ma'am, you keep hitting him, I'm locking your ass up. It didn't bother him. Do you want to get her to the car? Yeah. Please. He ain't uh, Campbell, saving me. Campbell, her friend yeah. didn't get her to the car. You're, you're let's go. doing your best she's not gonna, to let let's go. Let, 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 no, no, no. No, 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 no. You are. The reason why is he drinking. Fucking West Palm fucking Beach. Fuck the sheriff's office. Fuck you all. No, 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 no. You guys are a disservice to this country. No, no, no. Because, like, these girls, these girls attacked me and you allowed it. You allowed it, you allowed it, you allowed it, you allowed and you're cool with it. Yeah. This is why the police get shot. Yeah. You're the yeah. reason why exactly. the police get shot. Exactly. Yep. I hope you get shot tonight. You hope you get shot I hope you get shot tonight. You hope what? Come on. Let's say it again. <laughs> The officers informed her that she would be arrested for disorderly intoxication. She refused to exit the vehicle, prompting officers to physically remove her. During this process, the woman fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious, a tactic she used to avoid arrest and seek medical attention instead. Despite her apparent act, it was clear to both her party and the officers that she was conscious as she responded to questions. Medics were called and after being examined, she was transported to the hospital for medical treatment before being booked into jail. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. You talked yourself into going to jail. I'm not, I'm not going to jail. Listen to me. Is this your husband's car? It's my car. Yes. Okay. Tell her to get out of the car or she's going to come out in a way she does not want to. I'm not going to jail. I didn't Bro. do anything wrong. Get out of the car. For what? 
Jail. For what? Get out of the car. What am I going to jail for? For this nonsense that you keep pulling. You guys could have been gone 10 minutes ago. I got marks on my neck and okay. a mark on my and mouth. You watch the video too. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You got Roll turn over. over. Turn over. Hey. Give me that arm, ma'am. There you go. All right, ma'am. You gotta roll you over on your on your side. Then once you put your knees up. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and put your knees up, ma'am. faced several charges following the incident. She was charged with two counts of disorderly intoxication under FS 856.011, which criminalizes disruptive behavior caused by intoxication. As a misdemeanor, this offense can result in up to 60 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. This charge reflects the state's focus on maintaining public order and safety by penalizing those who engage in unruly conduct while under the influence of alcohol. Additionally, the woman was charged with simple battery domestic as outlined in FS 784.03. Simple battery involves the intentional touching or striking of another person without their consent. This charge, stemming from the physical altercation, is classified as a misdemeanor and carries potential penalties of up to one year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. The charge underscores the serious nature of physical aggression, especially in a domestic context. Finally, she faced two counts of resisting without violence under FS 843.02. This charge pertains to obstructing law enforcement officers in their duties without the use of physical force. It is also classified as a misdemeanor and can result in up to one year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. This charge highlights the importance of compliance with lawful police actions and the consequences of impeding their efforts during an investigation. All right, let's move to this next case where things might get even messier. On February 24th, 2024, a Florida law enforcement officer conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle traveling at 100 miles per hour on the highway. The driver, Christina, was initially pulled over for speeding and swerving in and out of her lane. Upon approaching the vehicle, the officer was informed by Christina that she had consumed a glass of wine about an hour before driving. This prompted the officer to administer field sobriety tests to assess her level of impairment. Okay. Good. 
It's on a Kia SUV. Northbound 441, just south of Forest Hill. <clears throat> How you doing? I am so sorry, like, I'm just trying to go back to my hotel and I know I was speeding, I'm so sorry. You got your driver license registration proof and insurance? Um, well, how much have you had to drink tonight? I did have a glass of wine, I'm not going to lie. You had a I glass did. of wine? I did, yes. And how long ago was that? An hour ago. Well, I mean, you're going well over 100 mile an hour. You didn't even realize you passed me, and you're swerving all over the road. So, I, I, know, I mean, I it's kind of a problem right now. No, I know. I think. Oh, no. That's not where it's coming from. Um, can I call my son? Like, I'm not really sure. Christina struggled with the tests, which suggested that she was too impaired to safely operate her vehicle. Despite the evidence of impairment, the officer exercised discretion and decided not to arrest her immediately. Instead, he offered Christina an opportunity to avoid a DUI charge by allowing her to call someone to pick her up and arrange for someone else to retrieve her vehicle, thereby avoiding its impoundment. All right, Christina, can you step out for me? Is the car in park? Yes, it is. All right, we're gonna go right up here. Oh my gosh, okay. What I'm going to ask you to do is to perform some field sobriety exercises, okay? Okay. I want to make sure that you're safe to drive. That's fine. Okay? Yeah. Arms down, okay. feet together. Just follow the tip of the pin with your eyes only, okay? Yeah. One more pass. The next task, what you're going to do is you're going to put your fingers out to the side like this. I feel like I need to get my phone at this point because, like, honestly, they like, Listen, is... it's being video recorded. I'm recording you, she's recording you, okay, and there's perfect. another camera right Good. there. Perfect, because it, okay. like, it should... Left. Turn your head back. Am I good? Like... H I J K L. P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Is there someone that can come pick you up? Um, you have someone that can pick you up. My son can. Your son can pick you up. Yeah. He hasn't been drinking tonight. No, my gosh, no. Okay. Once you get to your hotel, okay, and he leaves you there, don't take your car out again. I I mean right? I I have no reason. I'm only here for my son, he plays football, like, there's no other reason for me to be here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there. All right, where's your phone? In my car. All right. Or in... So, even though all that happened, okay, I don't think you're impaired to the point that I should arrest you, but you are impaired enough that I'm not gonna let you drive away from here. So if you wanna call your son and have him come pick your car up, pick you up. Christina called a friend she had recently met who agreed to come and pick her up and also asked her son to come for the car. While waiting for her son and friend to arrive, Christina's behavior took a turn for the worse. She began to hurl insults at the officers, accusing them of racial bias and claiming that she was pulled over because of her race. As her agitation escalated, Christina's comments turned into threats, leading the officers to detain her. Hello. Hey, um, where about are you? I'm doing Okay. So listen, I got pulled over <laughs> um, and they're not going to let me drive. So if you can like come where I'm at, I know it's so crazy. Do you have anyone that he could uh, bring with him to take the car for you? No, he does not. Okay, that's fine. So that's why I called my son. So 
I'll stay in the street like a loser, but my son's gonna come with his friend and take the car, okay. if that's all right, because, okay. yeah. We're why? not arresting you. Because okay. you don't have enough, that's what you're saying. Like, it he doesn't make sense. You a bunch now, of why tickets. are you still arguing with me? I'm, I'm just not telling you I'm not arguing break. with you. I'm not arguing okay. with you. You just said I'm letting her know that there's not a lot, enough for me to let you sleep. To take I'm sorry. you to jail. To yes. To jail. And I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just, that's what you said to me. Okay. I mean, just, just understand. I don't know if it's a black and white factor here because you guys play that Can part. You, not how do you in front get that? But you guys play no. that you part. Don't, you don't even know who Absolutely was pulling not. you over. It could have been anybody. Yep, so how but, do you play that, that part? But now that you did, but now that you did, now that you did, mm -hmm. I know. Have but, a seat on the Listen, but don't disrespect me. I did not disrespect she was you. Not disrespecting I did not disrespect you. Don't disrespect me. Ma'am. Do not. Christina, have a seat on the passenger side. Out of the road, come on this or come I, on this I, side. I'm out of the road. Your car is far over the way for me. Yes. I did not disrespect you. Don't don't you dare disrespect me. No, I did not. No, I did. No, I did. Oh, now you want to be quiet, right? Yep. Uh-huh. I'm gonna tell you what, you don't know who I am, and but you're about to find out. I'm so sick of racism and this she was literally in my face and she's like, you don't know me, and I'm like Oh, she has no idea. No, why was no. she in my face like that? Can you stop? No, but why Talk were you in my face son. like that? Give your son the address where you're at. Oh, he's going to come. So he can come here and get you. But don't get in my face like that. She's not in your she face. She was, though. Can you stop? She f***ing was, though. You don't f***ing know me, bitch. She no. was like, you don't know what I've been through like this to me. Don't tell me she wasn't. Have a seat and stop. No, don't tell, don't f***ing tell me that. Go ahead and put the phone no, down. listen. Let me just nope. talk to my son, please. Put, put the phone down. Please stop. Just stop. Please. All right. No, turn stop. Turn around. Turn around. Christina, turn around. Just stop. Turn around. Okay. Where's my phone? All right. Just turn around. He asked me to. No, you need to like you need to stop harassing me. Yeah, this is stop. sexual harassment. Don't touch my Christina, leg. Christina, have a seat in you're, the car. You're sexually harassing me. You're sexually harassing me. Don't touch me. No, you're actually arrested. Have a seat or you're going to be tased. Christina's case highlights several key aspects of Florida law related to DUI and interactions with law enforcement. The primary issue of impaired driving falls under Florida statute 316.193, which governs DUI offenses. According to this statute, driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs with a back of 0.08% or higher or impaired faculties is illegal. The officer's decision to offer Christina a break rather than immediate arrest reflects a discretionary approach often used in field situations. If Christina had been arrested, potential penalties under Florida statute 316.193.1 could have included fines ranging from $500 to $1,000 due by school, community service, and up to six months in jail. Enhanced penalties would apply if her back were 0.15% or higher, or if minors were present in the vehicle. The additional charges against Christina resisting an officer with violence, battery on a law enforcement officer, and corruption by threat relate to her aggressive behavior towards the officers. These charges involve significant legal consequences. Under Florida law, resisting an officer with violence is a third degree felony, which can result in up to five years in prison. Battery on a law enforcement officer is also a third degree felony with similar potential penalties. Corruption by threat, a more severe charge, is typically treated as a second degree felony, carrying potential penalties of up to 15 years in prison. All right, fellas, what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more interesting and educational contents in the future. Thanks for your support.